Hi fellow developers, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to discuss continuous integration and continuous delivery. In the next several minutes, we will discuss what CICD is, why they are critical in a model development, and uh, how to implement that in your projects. Let's get started. So continuous integration and continuous delivery, or CICD for short, are two separate processes but CD is kind of one step further than the CI. So we can discuss the CI first. So let's take a look at a definition here. So continuous integration or CI is a uh, development practice where developer integrate code into a shared repository uh, frequently. It's normally several times a day. And to catch the integration issues, it might be, um, you know, they uh, fix the conflicts. Um, um, it's not necessarily a code conflicts, but rather um, the behavior conflicts. Like you change something uh, and I pulled the latest um, code and then I found the functionality is broken. Um, so it's more like a function broken. And to make sure that the software is always in a releasable state, that is very important. And let's have a look at the uh, a concrete example here. So let's say you are a developer and you're working in your ID normally every day for the most of the time. And at the end of the day, you would push the code to the shared repo, right? And uh, you, in your local, you would do the testing, but it's more like an isolated test. It's testing the, the, the behavior or the, the, the code you changed and then you checked in. And uh, in a team, because everyone doing basically the same thing, the developers um, particularly, so because everyone working isolated on their own branch, on their local, and uh, their change is working perfectly in their environment, it doesn't necessarily mean it can work together. So we need a environment um, that a shared environment can um, use the latest code the merged code and to using that source code to build a uh, package. By saying package, I mean if it's a C++ project, it's uh, executable or a shared library. And if it's a JAR project, you might eventually build a JAR uh, package. And for front-end uh, JavaScript code, you will need a bundler. This is what we call artifacts. So once those packages are created, we need to upload them into somewhere that people can you know, pull them or download them and test them. So this is called repository and it could be a Maven repo or um, other kind of uh, i3 bucket to hold these, these uh, static assets. And the once it's uploaded, so people, let's say, so a desktop user, they want to use that executable file and they will download that to the local and use that package. If it is a web application, uh, let's say Google or Facebook, and then people uh, using other devices can access them through a uh, internet. Um, to recap, the process is that as a developer, you write code, you run the build script uh, to verify that in your local, and then put that push that into a remote repository. This repository is a code repository, let's say GitHub or GitLab, and then there is a server which is called CI server, continuous integration server. It will pull uh, the latest code from the GitHub or code, code repository and use a build script to create artifacts and finally push that into a artifacts repository. So that's from one user perspective. And in the real world, if you are working in a team, um, everyone basically doing the same thing. So that's basically how a continuous integration works. As you can see, it's just a part of the story. From the artifacts to the user can actually using it, there is still a big gap there. And that's where CD kicks in. So continuous delivery is one step further than the continuous integration. So remember that in the continuous integration, we have built the artifacts. So normally the artifacts itself is not really executable because it doesn't have the environment. So the CD, on the other hand, will handle all the environment setups 
and the different configuration setups for different environments, let's say staging, testing, and the production. So it includes the CI process, but it has a few more steps. Let's take a look at another example. So let's say you have an express uh, application. It's very simple, it's just uh, accepting the codes um, request and they response a list of codes for you. So normally you would do that in your local, you test that it's working fine, but you want to making the application to be accessible by everyone in the world. But then the local host won't work obviously because no one can access your local host. So remember that in the continuous integration, we have already built a artifacts. So once we made the change and we push the change and the CA will help us to build the uh, app or bundle the JS uh, and save that in the S3 bucket or somewhere, bundle the JS to launch the application. But the problem is that in this case, user is regular user. They don't know what Node.js is. They don't have a, a server to host the Node.js. So firstly, we will need a machine to host this application. And uh, the, the machine need to be hosted in somewhere like publicly accessible. So user from anywhere can access this uh, you know, cloud address from a URL. But if we zoom in, the machine itself needs a lot of setups. It needs operation system, it needs the uh, the runtime, it needs the NGX, like HTTP server, application server, and package manager. It needs a lot of things. And after installation, you need to configure them, this software correctly and making sure they are working together. So obviously there are a lot of work here. And we don't want that process to be manual, right? So we need to bundle all these together, the environment, and the configuration for the environment and our application, the artifacts, the bundle.js, all together into something. The good news is we have Docker. So Docker basically is a um, mechanism helping us to snapshot the environment and application all together into a single file. And it's normally called an image. And the image contains all the necessary dependencies for, um, for, for our application. It has the Express, it has Node.js environment. Once we have this image, we can run that image uh, into a container. If we have the image, we have everything. And now our continuous integration process will be something like this. So instead of compiling, uh, packaging the um, final artifacts as a bundled.js, we, we will bundle them all together with Node.js, with Nginx, with Express, all together into a Docker image. And once we have that image, we can uh, upload that into a repo as well. It's doc repo. Uh, there are many, many uh, services can help us to run the image. For example, AWS has a service called ECS, Elastic Container Service. So basically you give it a doc image, it will run that inside the container and serve it as a web application. So basically the only thing you need to give it the cloud provider is the Docker image and they will handle the rest. So with all this together, we can call that the continuous delivery. That means whatever you change in your local, you run the um, test in your local as well and then you push it to a repo. In a CI server, continuous integration server, it will pull your um, code change and use the build script to build the Docker image and upload the image into a Docker repo and uh, then trigger deployment process. And finally, it's ready to be consumed by the end user. And talk about the, the CI server or CD server, there are so many alternatives. So um, you can use Bamboo or SQL CI, um, the GoCD, GitLab, uh, the Jenkins. There are so many uh, different options. And recently I found that GitHub Actions are pretty good for maintaining CI CD as well. And uh, that's probably a topic for another video. And that's all I have for today. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.